Hey there, and welcome to another video with me, Chris Marikos. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a few different phrases, but they're all really similar. The first phrase and the biggest one that we're going to talk about is has always been. Has always been. What does that mean? We're going to talk about it in this video. Get ready! Okay, probably you know the word always. And you might know the opposite of that word, which is never. These are something called adverbs of frequency. If you don't see it, it should have popped up somewhere around on the bottom. Yeah. Adverbs of frequency are words like always, never, sometimes, often, frequently, rarely, seldom, and a lot of others. You might also know the word usually. That's also an adverb of frequency. Yes, this is what they're called. And we can use these kinds of adverbs in sentences that have helping verbs by putting them between the helping verb and the main verb. And I'm going to show you a few examples of that today. Let me switch to my other hand. This hand's getting tired. And you can see behind me, I have this plaque from YouTube. It's only silver. Meh, not so impressive, right? But it hasn't always been there. Yes, you heard me correctly. Hasn't always been there. We can say that something has always been, or something has never been, or we can also say it hasn't always been, right? So we can say that this YouTube plaque hasn't always been there. I just put it there recently. And in fact, all of this stuff that you see around me it hasn't been here very long. It hasn't always been here. It has recently been added because I moved to a new house and had to decorate this room. So we can say that something has always been and it can be about existing. It can be about the verb to be, right? Like we said, it hasn't always been here. It's about just being, the verb to be. But sometimes we use it in a different way. We might say, he hasn't always been rich, for example. If we say he hasn't always been rich, this means he became rich at some point, right? And before that, he was not rich. And English sometimes is difficult to understand because of phrases like this. In fact, English has never been the easiest language to learn, right? We can keep using this phrase over and over again, but let me explain a little bit more about it. I like to explain, I like to draw some pictures, so let me share that with you. All right, first of all, we have the form of a verb called present simple. Now, if you don't know what that means, don't worry, most native speakers also don't know what that means because they hear this grammar term once or twice in school and then they completely forget it. So when we're learning a language as a second language, as a foreign language, when we're learning a new language, it's important to know some terms about grammar and how the language works. And this is some part of linguistics, which is related to learning languages too. So present simple, it looks something like this picture. Here we have now, this is the present moment right now. And this action is a cycle. It repeats over and over and over again. So for example, we could say, I walk to the office. I work from home. I go shopping. These are actions that are present simple and they're repeated. They happen again and again and again. That's present simple. Now, honestly, it's not so simple sometimes, but it's called present simple. And here's an example. English is fun. You might say English is fun, especially after you watch my YouTube videos, right? <laughs> <laughs> so past simple is much simpler and past simple we have now the present moment and then we have something that happened in the past so we might say english was fun english was fun when chris was my teacher but now <laughs> no i'm joking english is always fun and the teacher just makes it more fun right so this is past simple and it's much different from present simple because in present simple something is it's repeating, it's a cycle. But in past simple, 
It's different, right? Past simple tells us about something that happened before now, it's finished. One thing in the past, finished. Now, present perfect is different from past simple and from present simple. Present perfect has two points in time. We have something before now and it's connected to now. And it's really important that they're connected. We could say English has been fun. English has been fun. So we started at one point and after that comes our present moment, right? So starting from this point until now, English has been fun. Now, this is where we might add in an adverb of frequency, like the word always. We could say English has always been fun. English has always been fun, and I'm sure that you'll agree with me on that one. All right, let's come over here and just give you a few more examples of how we might use this form. So we could say, she always plays soccer on Saturdays. And this means that we're using present simple. It's just an action that repeats and repeats and repeats and it's always the same, right? She always plays soccer on Saturdays. Now, what if we wanna ask about the past, right? The moment that she started playing soccer on Saturdays until now. We could say, she has always played soccer on Saturdays. And this means that from the beginning, from some point earlier, before now, from the very beginning, this is the activity that she has done, right? She has always done this from the moment that it started or from the moment that I started looking or maybe from the moment that I met her until now. But the word has is only about he, she, and it. So if we wanna talk about I or you or we or they, then we need to use have. Probably you know that already if you understand everything else that I'm saying in this video. So, but it's a good reminder that has always been is only when we talk about he, she, and it. So I could say, I have always been an English teacher, right? And in which situations might we say something like that? Because it might be hard to imagine the situation when that's correct or the situation when that's uh, the right thing to say. I could say, I have always been an English teacher. I can say that when someone comes to me and they say, Chris, I thought that you were a dentist. Don't look at my teeth. <laughs> it's not a real example. I thought that you were a dentist. And I say, no, no, no. I have always been an English teacher. I'm an English teacher now, and I have always been an English teacher. And someone might say, Chris, I don't think you're American. I don't think you're from the United States. And I can say, oh, I have always been American, right? I, my parents are American and lived in the United States most of my life. Uh, everyone in my family speaks English. They're only American. I've always been American. So we can use this phrase to say that something started at a point in, in the past, it continued until now, it's true now, and we can see that connection, right? We can see all of that time period or, or we can see how that makes it true now. Or maybe we want to talk about recent changes that have happened, like maybe in your city or country, it's a lot hotter now than usual or maybe it's a lot colder now than usual. And you can say, it hasn't always been this hot here, right? It hasn't always been this hot in my city. And you can say this because in the past, it usually was not like this. So from the moment that you know in the past until now, this has not always been true. So when we use these phrases like has always been and have always been, what we're doing is we're talking about this time period, right? This is really what we're focusing on right here, this time period, where we're saying that from the beginning of this time period, from the first point in the past, before now, and until now, this thing is true or not true. So I hope this video helps you understand the phrase has always been. If you'd like some more examples, you can go over to the blog post on our website. The link is under this video. And even if you don't want more examples, just go over there. We have a lot of useful content and a lot of things that are different from YouTube. 
In fact, you can come to our website and you can sign up so that you get more information from us and we send out information frequently. We have a lot of updates and then you can also get speaking practice. So just click the links under this video to find out more. Thank you so much for watching today and I look forward to seeing you in the next video or maybe even in the next lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.